you can catch him chilling with his cat or in Dubai flying on his jetpack, knitting with his kids or on Twitter spitting facts. Millions of followers, he's putting Islam on the map. His name's Mufti Menk, and I'm so glad to have him back. Whoa, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah, we got it. Mashallah. Leave me alone. This is not haram, and I know what I'm doing. Perhaps I have actually thought about it and studied it way deeper than you have. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, as much as I, uh, it might sound very strange, but I didn't really know who Andrew Tate was. Look, for example, Khabib, he has a massive impact and a huge following among Muslims and non-Muslims. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and what else? Hit the bell for now. Yeah, <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you on Mufti. Um, first time for me, but I'm sure you had a conversation before with Brother Kamal a couple of years ago, just yes, during mashallah. the coronavirus period, I believe. Alhamdulillah. A lot has changed. Um, how long has it been since you've been in Australia? I think two and a half years, just before Corona. You've become a local, you've been coming here regularly, Alhamdulillah. How are you finding Australia? It's a lovely place, I must say. It's only a little bit too far. Sometimes the jet lag uh, messes with you a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Anyway, that's it must be bothersome for you going on a plane because I'm sure you get recognized wherever you are by well, the flight well, attendants, by the uh, whoever sitting next to you is like cheering. They're having the best flight of their life. Probably. Well, not always, but a lot of the times, yeah. a lot of the times. But I think people are now they're used to it, and the the, the the initial excitement of a few minutes wears off when they realize you're just a human being, you know. Yeah. They don't spend the whole 14 hours trying to get into your head, trying uh, to ask for advice. A few times, not 14 hours, but a few times <laughs> you have some people who probably lack that etiquette and they irritate you with, yeah. you know, videoing you at any odd time. Oh, that's yeah. not that's, a, nice that's a bit annoying. We'll try not to annoy you for the next uh, half an hour <laughs> to an hour, but we're going to try to ask you as much questions as possible. Inshallah. Inshallah. Muhammad Malik, let's go. Mufti, to add to Kumar's sentiment, you know, since you've been here, I think the skies have been a little bit brighter and the rose is a bit more sweeter, subhanAllah. But to get to the question and to the topic of today's discussion for today's opening question, Mufti, we live in a world full of media personalities. Alhamdulillah, you've accumulated, I think, 96 million followers on Twitter, subhanAllah, with us being, of course, one of your most devoted followers. Mm -hmm. On TikTok, we see Muslims such as Khabi Lane, who's arguably the biggest TikTok star there is. You, you know, know Khabi, right? Yes. He's the it's most hard. followed person on earth yes. he is. on TikTok. That's amazing. You also have Burak. I don't know if you know Chef Burak in Turkey. He knows Burak. You were with Personally, Burak. I've, I've yes. seen. I think I've you've seen, seen the videos. I've seen videos with Mufti Mek and Burak Mashallah. in Taksim. I love pray for Someone Taksim. told me that the video of him sort of uh, dumping the food in front of me has more than 100 million views. Allahu oh. Akbar. I don't think any of it went to waste though, did it Mufti? No, it didn't. Actually, he, one yeah. of his qualities is that they pack up the food that's worth packing up and they distribute it to the poor. That's one oh, of the yeah. beautiful things about that brother. He's very generous and it, it, he's very charitable as well. He's loved. Yeah. He's absolutely yeah. loved. I love him too, if, if he watches this. We also have Hospital, which is oh. everyone's favorite. I don't think he doesn't love Hospital. Everyone loves Hospital. Hello. But Mufti, you have talked about all these personalities. They've dominated the online world, these personalities. Muslims are coming out of the shadows and coming into uh, these kind of platforms. The question I would ask you is, a bit of a controversial one, would you consider this a win? for the Ummah. And is this enough representation? It's not enough representation and it may not be immediately translated as a full out win because I think it's got to do with responsibility. Uh, it's not good enough to just be famous and waste that. I think there has to be an underlying goodness that must come out of it. Uh, the values you stand for, the morals, uh, the teachings, the character, the conduct. Uh, I always tell people who are sports persons and those who are famous that, listen, you don't need to go out and actually uh, do physical da'wah in the sense of call people towards something you may not be able to articulate to them in, in, in a way you might not have enough knowledge to do certain things. But if you carry yourself as a Muslim, then it's a win. Mm -hmm. If you do not carry yourself as a Muslim, then we need to work towards that before it becomes a win. MashaAllah. I think one of the most uh, prominent hadiths that comes to my mind during this topic is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he alludes to the fact that there'll be a kathra 
there'll be an abundance of Muslims. The Rusa. Yeah. Yeah. But the Rusa meaning like uh, like the froth at the, uh, on the waves of, of, of the ocean. Uh, meaning they will be it will be meaningless. So what I've noticed is there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of challenges that we're facing every single day. And there are many Muslims who are grappling, you know, they are holding on to their faith. Uh, many of them have questions that are not being uh, answered. And at times, uh, people put pressure on them. So as much as there are people coming into the fold of Islam, I must say there are Muslims who are not so strong in their faith because they haven't educated themselves. Because Islam is knowledge-based. Mm -hmm. If you know, you become strong. If you don't know, anyone can actually sway you. So with all these pressures, uh, I have over the years specialized in uh, attending to those who are weaker, those who are further perhaps, and helping them rediscover their identity, strengthen it, and inch closer. And then they may latch on to others as they come closer because my the, the level that I have perhaps ultimately specialized in is that. But it's the majority, trust me. A lot of people want to be better Muslims and instead of being doomed and just uh, pointed at as though, you know, you guys are useless, someone needs to help them identify with that and uh, help them come closer. Allah accept from you and Allah use you and Allah use us and Allah allow us to be of, you know, uh, I mean, help I mean, to, to those around us. I mean, that that's very important that you say Allah use you and Allah use us because what I believe is we are all serving the ummah. There are scholars who are quite hard and harsh there are scholars who are a little bit more lenient. There are some who specialize in specific topics. There are some who uh, have mastered you know, certain things. We need all of these. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel sorry for those who look at someone and say, you know, this guy, we don't need him in the ummah and he's a waste of time because they're catering to a, a group that is benefiting from them somehow. And you might have a, a person who's a little bit softer in approach like myself. I may appeal to a lot of people who are struggling with their faith, but trust me, the same people, when they come closer, they might look at me and say, ah, this guy's a little bit too lenient, but they forget that there was a time when, had it not been for the leniency, they wouldn't even have come closer. So we shouldn't discount people. We should look at what they're doing. Sometimes it's well thought out and it's very, very careful work in order to aim at a certain category, but people couldn't know any better. So when you say you and us and all of us, I really believe in that. I wouldn't ever want to punch a person who's within the, the you know, doing some good work actually. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I might bring up a very controversial figure, but we've just had Andrew Tate accept Islam, someone who is the most Googled person on earth. Yes. And it's very interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would use such a person mm -hmm. to accept Islam. Someone who has a very strong influence on disadvantaged young men, young males who speaks to them. He calls them young kings and has a very profound impact on them. It's very interesting that Allah would use someone like him. And we ask Allah to protect him and to actually make this uh, conversion sincere. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, as much as I, uh, it might sound very strange, but I didn't really know who Andrew Tate was. Obviously, I, I, I'm busy in Top my field and, and so on. Yeah, sorry. But uh, th then when, when, when the hype came, I obviously found out and I obviously, then I, I checked him out and I was very happy at the Shahada, obviously, who wouldn't be? I mean, we're, we're Muslimin and we're all excited. And I wish for everyone to be Muslim. Every, I mean, every, yeah, human exactly. Being. And, and mashallah, he, he seems like a very sincere brother and he says what he feels. That's, that means the, 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 the hypocrisy factor doesn't seem to be there at all. In fact, it, it probably isn't because he says it as he, he thinks. As he deems. Uh, yeah, that's how it comes across, alhamdulillah. So it's a good thing. And what I believe Islam would do for a brother like that is amazing it would streamline his ideas and actually uh, you know between misogynism and feminism those are the terminologies that people use today uh, we have a beautiful islam the prophet sallallahu approach because i know i faced some of my friends some scholars as well and some uh, regular muslims who sometimes have told me certain things no sheikh you're too soft and no sheikh you're this and that and i tell you it's not that 
Islam is a balance. There are times when the Prophet Sallallahu was extremely lenient and very forgiving. There were times when he spoiled his family members. You know, I, I want to clarify one thing uh, that, that really made its rounds because what happens on social media is people take a clip and they use it either for a laugh or they use it to, to, to get views or Hysteria. they use it for a, for a, for a point. It's been the story. One day I was speaking to a brother, Musa Adnan. <clears throat> yeah, beautiful brother. Beautiful brothers. Yeah. And we were talking about how important it is when you get married to, to know where your friends are and where your spouse stands, right? And the point I was raising is if your uh, friends, uh, you know, call you names because you no longer spend as much time as you did with them, don't uh, don't become a slave of that and don't be impacted by that to oppress your spouse. And then the point I raised was, well, even if they call you a chicken, what's the point? You know, I mean, don't, so what if they, call, I wouldn't mind being called a chicken. And so what they did is they took the clip from that point mm -hmm. and they didn't understand the context of what was being said. And then they said, this man says, you can be a chicken to your wife and you can quack, quack. And I did say that and chickens don't quack by the way, but, yeah, uh, I, 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 and what I, what I was trying to say is, look, if there's something that's minor, why do you want to make a big issue out of it? Islam does allow. I mean, the wives of the Prophet Sallam, you know, when one of them said, "I don't want to to ride on this camel because it's too slow," he he changed the camel and he put her on a faster one. You know, I mean, what what's that? Mm -hmm. So it th there is a balance. It, it's happened to me where people say, "Oh, you said this and you said that," but we're calling towards a balance. A man needs to know, and a woman, when to be lenient, when to be a little bit harder, when to be a bit harsh, when to uh, forgive, when to hold things, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a beautiful balance. I believe that's what Islam would do to anyone who's genuine in learning. It would create a balance. It's not all about being, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm the king, I'm the boss, and that's me. I mean, no one would like you in that case, because why? It's not the case. Yeah, it would regulate you towards that wasat. You need the middle path. You are you are a king, but if only you have a queen, mm. there goes. Um, you know? I think you've touched on a lot there, Mufti, and one of them from what I was drawing is the attractiveness of Islam. I think from my recent conversations with a couple of converts and people who've come into the fold of Islam, I think there's actually three main reasons as to why they fell in love with Islam. I think one of them was um, a return to traditional family values. That yes. was definitely one that you talked about. Second one, second one was... Um, and forgive me for saying this, but it was the the hookup and ghosting culture that social media kind of feeds in. And the third one, believe it or not, was actually having clean, uh, non-processed like food as well. So that was, they were all quite dietary. Inter yeah, dietary requirements. So they were all quite holistic things. But Mufti, what else do you think? What is the, what is the attractiveness of Islam that, that people just fall in love with? Is it that mizan that you were talking about, that balance? Well, I tell you what, uh, definitely the balance is one of the key factors, but people are fed up of a, a life of glamour that actually brings no meaning to you. A li I mean, the most famous of people are not necessarily the happiest of people. The wealthiest of people are not necessarily the most content of people, yet they have. So what is it that you that actually would give the meaning to your life that you're looking for so desperately? Mm -hmm. Is it wealth? Well, if it was wealth, why are there people with that that don't have it? You know what I mean? And if it was fame, and those are the two most sought after things by the material world today, mm -hmm. uh, why is it that the famous people are also quite depressed and they all, because you need to discipline yourself and you need to submit yourself to a higher power. Something that's greater than yourself. Yes, absolutely. And when you look at Islam and you look at the Quran and you look at the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you look at what Allah has ordained. It's a balance. It's discipline. I mean, if, if we say no intoxicants, it's because the mind is sacred. Mm -hmm. Allah doesn't want you to compromise or cloud that most beautiful, powerful organ of your body. So uh, those type of teachings with discipline. Uh, today, if someone wants to, uh, you know, shape up and become fit, they need discipline to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And they need to make sure that every single day there's a routine. I eat something. and So if you're going to eat specific foods only because you need a good shape and you need to feel your, that your body's in good shape, don't you think you're going to have to also discipline yourselves in a similar way to ensure that your spirituality is in good shape?
even Islam talks about gluttony as well. They say like a third of evil is from gluttony and it makes you become very lazy in that, you know, nobody's doing the, the prayers. Or, and majority so of the diseases yeah, from the stomach as yeah, well. Yeah. So <coughs> this balance is something that's really, uh, 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 you know, interesting the people and uh, they come towards the goodness of Islam. It's a very balanced faith. Uh, the most balanced and Allah calls uh, the ummah, the balanced ummah, the middle path. Mm -hmm. Similarly, people are, like I said, fed up. Uh, also, a lot of people, the concept of godhood. Mm -hmm. Islam has worship of the deity, the maker, a direct relationship between you and your creator. That is unmatched. Mm -hmm. That is something that's unique. I mean, when you drop down in prostration or sujood and you actually know that I'm prostrating for he who made me, he whom I'm going to return to. And here I am saying, you are the highest and the greatest. I mean, there's nothing that beats that. There's nothing that beats that. So Alhamdulillah, as much as we have people who always uh, pick on us, but you have a lot of people, mashallah, who are seeing the light and they come yeah. forth. Islam is different, I guess, to some other faith-based religions, um, religions in the sense that it's not named after a figure. So we have Islam, but then if you look at Christianity, Christ, and you know, Buddhism, Buddha and so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Um, on the topic of Dawah, I want to move forward into the topic of Dawah. Um, your name actually popped up in a conversation a few days ago I was having with my friend and I actually mentioned to him that Mufti Menk, and I'm not praising you to your face, but I said Mufti Menk revolutionized the Dawah of our current era or our current time because he normalized being normal, if that makes sense. So from we, we saw a shift from you whereby... We were used to the sheikh that was sitting on the on the table like this, giving his talk and very, very um, strict, very stern. But then we saw a mufti on a jetpack in Dubai, right? And then a mufti playing with his cats. And you kind of normalized being normal. So I want to talk about your philosophy of da'wah. You've touched on it a little bit, but what is the philosophy of your da'wah, which I personally believe is one of the biggest secrets behind the appeal, behind the millions of followers on Twitter and Instagram. What is the secret? I think as you say, okay, revolutionize, I don't know about, but I do. Changed, yeah, transformed. But, yeah, but I do agree with the normalization because when I was young, obviously we have the sheikhs who used to visit us and, you know, scholars and so on. And they, we, we couldn't even get close to them. And mm. they always, okay, these people came in, they taught us something, they went. But we, as I grew older, you know, there were things that we, we had to do because of our children. And there were things I remember... Uh, teaching my little girls how to knit, and a few people picked on that. Yeah, like, like and I felt that uh, they were nitpicking. Yeah. If you excuse the joke, <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> nitpicking. <laughs> but in in all honesty, there's I would do it. I would do it again, and I have. And uh, it's just that the world needs to see these things. It doesn't make you any. Uh, it doesn't make you feminine Less at all. Man, I mean, I, I I totally disagree with the with with the people who may have looked at it that way. Uh, it's not. It's actually part of your part of your masculinity to be able to do certain things for your own children and for whatever i mean they look at you to make your kids love you that's masculine yes and 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 the irony of it is the same people who picked on me at that time never ever mentioned how masculine it might have been to do to to, to do some of the other stuff <laughs> yeah, that i've done very true uh but yes when people look at Jetpack. that yeah, yeah when 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 and even jumping off a plane I'm uh, oh, oh uh, slow down right uh, yeah uh, I did it again recently. I haven't posted that. Maybe I should. I have the video. So uh, the reality is all of that uh, lets the, the masses out there and uh, the vast majority who are looking to strike a balance uh, within the between the worldly life and the faith and what it requires of you to say, look, for as long as it's halal fun, it's permissible. It's okay. And if you do it with the right intention, you're going out with your family. And, you know, uh, someone actually told me uh, about the jetpack. They says, oh, how was the beach when you went back? Trying to trying to sort of find something wrong with yeah, it. Yeah, 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 to say. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it was a very, it's a very private little place. So there was nothing. So I, it's just that I didn't respond to the brother because I didn't want to give it importance. But I'm laughing to myself saying, look at how people are. But the vast majority appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And at least they look forward to something and it's not something haram. Uh, and at the same time, it is an alternative for our children because if you take a look at social media and what's going on across the globe today, there is a lot of stuff that appeals that may be haram, but to the youth it may appeal to a degree at a certain point, especially, especially when they're yeah. weak. So if you've given them an alternative to that, 
to say, no, you'd rather aim for this, aim for that. And so many people have, have, have gone for certain things, you know, that, that I've done because I did it. And then guys say, but you wasted the time. You should have taught them salah. Hang on. Salah is there. It will come. And so many other, uh, I, I, I speak about it so many times, but there it goes. So to be able to normalize certain things in, in that particular way, I think it is very important. Not all the scholars would, would fit into that, but if you can, you should. I had a friend, um, Hikmah, his name's Hikmah. He's the manager of Brother Saeed, the Nasheed artist. He said, we need to make people happy to be Muslim. Mm. And he goes, there is goodness in making people happy to be Muslim because there are so many people out there that are not happy to be Muslim. They don't want to be Muslim. They don't know that Islam, you can still be happy, have fun. So props to you, Mufti. Yeah, when we say so many people, I mean, it's, it's not, not it's definitely not majority, yeah. but there are a lot there of people are. out there. Yeah, mm. I agree with you. May Allah make it easy. And I pray that all of us could actually, you know, do things that would uh, make the masses realize that, you know what, it's lovely to be a Muslim. We, we're disciplined. I mean, for as long as that food is halal, whether it is in the shape of a burger or in the shape of just uh, something else, it's fine. For as long as it's halal food, it doesn't mean that it has to be uh, cut in a specific meaning uh, shape in order mm. for it to for me to be able to eat it and so on. But alhamdulillah. But it's like good advice that you're talking about, Mufti. And I think that, mashallah, as we said, you, you act, you're actively doing that on your Twitter space. And I don't know if you notice now, but... Elon Musk has acquired Twitter for, I think, about $4 billion. 44. No, 44, 44. Oh, $44 billion. Oh, Too much excuse money. Me. Uh, $44 billion. He walked him to Twitter headquarters carrying a sink, tweeting, let that sink in. So, you know, it is a crazy yeah. world out there. But um, Mufti, I would ask you, if you were in charge of Twitter and talking about having a healthy lifestyle and, and guiding the youth, how what would you do? What would you change? What would you implement on Twitter? I wouldn't be in charge of Twitter. You wouldn't be in charge of Twitter. You wouldn't <laughs> want to seek a position. <laughs> <Muslim Twitter>. yeah. <laughs> no, actually, uh, perhaps I haven't thought of it, but um, if I were in charge of a massive uh, social media platform, mm -hmm. I think I, two things we would, we would try and achieve. One is to ensure that people uh, speak the truth because there's a lot of lies about one another. And, you know, you, they call it fake news and all yeah, that. It is a problem. It is a Misinformation, disinformation, it is a problem. So if something could happen about it, I'm not a professional in that field, but that would probably be a priority. And secondly, is I would give the opportunity to people of all faiths to actually, uh, you know, have a, have, have a respectful say in order for there to be a healthy discussion. Because, uh, uh, you know, I know some Muslims might say, oh, let this be a purely Muslim platform and so on. But I think that when you have the truth and you're convinced about it, you're not intimidated by what you consider not the truth. Mm. You're not intimidated by it. I mean, I, if I've sat and met with people of, you know, different faiths, different, I'm so confident about the truth that I have. I don't need to worry about the, the something that they have that's not on that level. Mm. But when we become so upset and so, you know, so... Uh, exclusively us alone. I mean, mm. what is there? Are you are you are you doubting yourself? It know, becomes a tit for tat kind of thing, and there's no mm. healthy there's, there's discussion. That, that powerful verse in the Quran: "Waqul al haq wa haq al batil." Just ja al haq. As long as the truth presents itself, yeah. falsehood will be will perish. We'll it perish. just needs to present itself. Because uh, a lot of the times there are questions that are raised by the youngsters, and uh, nobody responds to them. You know. It's, it's tricky. So that creates uh, a doubt in the mind. And that doubt, I remember Ahmad Didat, rahmatullahi alayhi. Rahmatullah alayhi. He once said that the only thing you need to do is to create a doubt in the mind of the other. And mm. that's the beginning of the end. Mm. That is, that's very true, Mufti. I mean, for me personally, yeah, that's quite grandeur. But for me, I probably would have done a, a no social media day. So on Twitter, have Friday off or, or any other day, but Friday in particular for us. And have it for just to clear your mind and have a healthy connection. What would you do, Kamal, if you were in charge of Twitter? Yeah, I would make sure um, One Path Network gets a verified badge without <laughs> having to pay $8 a, a week or a month. Whatever. <laughs> That's what I would probably do. Yeah. I see uh, you guys have thought about it. And we I, have, yeah. yeah. We have yeah. definitely. With the, a bit on that as well, if you were in a room with the most the world's richest man, which is Elon Musk, as we were mentioning, how would that conversation be? What would you tell him to guide him to the path? Or what would the conversation be in general? I'd bring a sink to the conversation. Oh, 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 oh. Touche. Touche. Touche, indeed. MashaAllah. Allah make it easy. I mean, I mean, yeah. I think he's South African, so we, yeah. 
we would uh, probably start the discussion. See, I'm a person, uh, even if I want to get religion to you, uh, I, I would start it off uh, somewhere 10 kilometers away. And I'd get to it in a way that you, you probably wouldn't even figure that I've gotten to it, but I did. I do that in nearly all my lectures. I mean, if I delivered a lecture, I delivered one this evening here in Sydney. And uh, so when you want to, when you want to say something, and this is advice to the to the to the dais especially, you, when you want to say something, be conscious of who you're talking to, what they would like to listen to, and give them what you would like to give them, mm. not necessarily with the olden method of wording things mm -hmm. you need to word it in a way that they know that mm -hmm. yes and it's appealing to them mm -hmm. i would get the same message across if you want to bring people to pray five times a day you don't just come in and say guys you guys are going to go to hell or you know you better pray five times a day because that's the first thing you're going to be it's important those that's an important hadith uh, the one about the first thing you're going to be questioned about but how are you going to word it for the people today? How are you going to bring it to the to the point where you give that hadith? You have to first, you know, build. There are a few a few points you must make that they, that are they would definitely agree with. They would feel that you understand them. You know the challenges they're going through. Mm -hmm. uh, you appreciate the, the the hardship and how tough it is to navigate through the difficulties of society. And then you give them what you have to bit by bit. So the same would apply if you were given an opportunity to sit with someone. You can't just sit Elon with Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk. Yeah. You First can't just sit with him and say, "Brother, say your shahad." Because <laughs> yeah. I could, when you, when you ask me the question, I could have easily, I would tell him, "Say ashhadu, ashhadu." <laughs> that's not that's not realistic. Yeah. Realistic is you you know you exchange pleasantries, you speak about common things you know he knows, mm -hmm. and you can probably introduce. Uh, I I did make I did make a, a comment about uh, faith when he was. Uh, you know, questioning God Almighty at one stage. Yeah. The was it the Hellfire yeah. tweet? Yes. So yeah. I did make a comment, but it was very. Uh, it wasn't only directed at him. I have this habit, you know, Ma'balu Aqwamin. We take it from the Hadith, mm -hmm. where if there is an issue, I don't necessarily need to uh, name name and shame, mm -hmm. but you need to broadly make mention of whatever the matter is and try and uh, give a word of advice. It might not be. Uh, full and holistically covering every aspect of it, but others would do it. So if I said something, another scholar said something, one or two might have been direct, some might not. All that together mm -hmm. makes a response to what, uh, what needed the response. Sure. Yeah. Maybe one day we can see a Mufti Meng sits down with Elon Musk podcast. I think everyone would love five to hours, I think we five or six hours. Yeah, that I would, would watch that. I would definitely <laughs> watch that. I'm sure. No, you'd probably. be surprised. Chances are I'd probably sit with you before he sat oh, no. with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like a, a few billion dollars away from Elon's stature. Um, Mufti, on the topic of Twitter, I think Muslim Twitter in particular, it's been described as a very toxic place, unfortunately. Um, primarily because algorithms, they promote toxic behavior. Let's, like, let's be honest. Yeah. Outrage, drama, hysteria, it's promoted by, by algorithms, Facebook, YouTube. Like, There's so much statistics that have proved this. Um, you yourself haven't been safe from the criticism. Mm. Um, how do you deal with with the, I guess, the toxic barrage of criticism, sometimes when it's valid, sometimes when it's invalid, sometimes when it's over-exaggerated, yeah. how do you balance? I think what I've done over time is I do my thing and I, I push off, that's mm -hmm. it. So I, I'll do what I, I have to, and then I don't take the rest of it to heart. Uh, yes, if someone raises something and it comes to my attention by those close to me, mm -hmm. if it is valid, we will immediately make amends, we will immediately change things and we will, maybe even apologize if need be but if it's invalid you know what thank allah that there are people there who uh, have an understanding and he's blessed you with a better understanding mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, good people they think very bad of you i mean mm -hmm. people say oh this guy is not even a muslim this guy is a sellout this guy those type of words they no longer hurt because you know you're beyond that mm -hmm. uh, you look at the 99 percent who are actually uh, benefiting and you keep going another thing is i have specialized in specific things mm. i stick to them on specific platforms if someone doesn't understand that i am sorry i do not need to explain it simple mm. as that if you look at the way i use twitter and facebook the specific accounts that are verified are used very differently from youtube and instagram and even from my own lessons, series, lectures, 
uh, I'm the imam in the masjid and so on. Every space has its methodology. Mm. Every space is used for a specific reason. So you have some people who want you to use it exactly the way they are using it or they call you astray or deviated, mm. not realizing that leave me alone. This is not haram and I know what I'm doing. Perhaps I have actually thought about it and studied it way deeper than you have. Mm. Yeah, you know, so powerful. you have to excuse the people. Mm. When I sit on, 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 on you know, uh, to, to actually post what I would like to post. I, I I try to clear it between me and Allah. Mm. And if there really there is something, there's a small circle of uh, people, or scholars that I really look up to and I feel that, you know, if these people told me something, it means because they're genuine. Mm -hmm. And mashallah, we, we, we go ahead with it. Alhamdulillah. This is the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I'm not comparing any of us or any of our actions to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of the greatest of Stature, stature and status when he would give his da'wah you know and it was rejected it was like yeah Allah as long as you're pleased with me mm -hmm. yeah as long as you're pleased with I me. think you've what you've explained with the is adab in a sense that's what you've done you've adab. you've you've basically given everything it's right at its time you've given that that's what you essentially you're doing I think mashallah you've and even you coming into studio today you think you've personify that as well well look i can tell you one thing very interesting is we're not in competition mm -hmm. you know you have one path network you have muslim central for example that i'm a, a big part of you have uh, my own personal channels maybe and so many other scholars and youngsters and da'is and on different different levels mm -hmm. we're not in competition with one another we're in competition with our own selves mm -hmm. the minute we feel I need the views, I need the likes. And you know what? Your intention is actually being warped. So people start attacking. They start they start uh, hating on their own colleagues. Mm -hmm. But I'm serving the same company, the same, uh, you know, boss. The, 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 the supreme deity we worship is obviously Allah. Mm -hmm. And we're all working towards it. Are you really working towards the same, mm -hmm. you know, cause? If you are, why are you jealous of your brother? It's true. He's your brother. Let him go. Help him. I have one quality. People always ask me, what's your secret? What's your secret? I don't know of a specific secret, but a few things that I feel may have resulted in, you know, perhaps a little bit of, uh, uh, maybe, uh, we ask, ask Allah, Allah for it I mean, to be. I mean. But one of it is bring up others in your field mm. in a way that people might not know. Bring them up, help them, be it morally, with support, even financially if need be, whatever other ability you have to prop them up to bring them up to support them to cheer them on and you know what as a result allah gives you 10 times more it's mentorship i think uh, yeah. alhamdulillah i'm proud I to have uh, Kam brother yeah. kamal as my Allah. good I teacher i usually try to say i'd like to be khabib to islam i want to give this brother khayib. this is him and his father uh, sorry for the uh, ufc uh, <laughs> but i try to be that kind of guy. Uh, no, alhamdulillah and alhamdulillah. and we're not look for example khabib yeah. Brilliant guy. He has his, he has a massive impact and a huge following among Muslims and non-Muslims. And then there is a discussion as to whether uh, the, the the field or the sport is actually uh, recommended or even permissible. You know, that discussion is all in its place. Mm -hmm. But that discussion aside, look at the impact of the man. Look at the what he's done. He's done a lot now. Am I going to sit and just rule him and everything he stands for out just Dismiss because him. just mm -hmm. because he, he he does something that some of the scholars have said, you know what, this is not supposed to be? Or should I just say, look, I disagree on one matter, but 99 other matters, he's a brilliant guy mm -hmm. with everything. What we do is we cancel a man, his salah, his ibadah, his shahada, his goodness, his character, his Quran, every simply because we've disagreed with that person on one or two matters. That is a weakness of the ummah. If we'd like to succeed as an ummah, we're going to need to get along with those whom we disagree with to a degree. Otherwise, what's going to happen? We'll be mm -hmm. so fragmented, we can't even move forward. I feel like mm -hmm. what you're saying, Mufti, is that we kind of, sometimes the Muslim community and other communities too are kind of like in a crab bucket where we're all just trying to pull each other down and no one's giving rise to anyone. We're all just bringing everyone down. Yes, bit bit. Which is so I found this even in Islamic organizations. If someone mm -hmm. invites you, look, I'll give you my own example. Someone invites you. I have certain criteria. It's not easy. You get several thousand invites a day, a day mm -hmm. at this, when you, you know, on this level. 
And you can only respond to one every so often, mm. right? And so, so many people are let down. Each one thinks this guy's a sellout. He's being paid. He's really, he's after the money. He's after the fame. Why doesn't he come with us? Why did he go with them? But my brother, put yourself in my shoes mm. and just thank Allah that I managed to do the little that I did. You know, mm. I can't really respond to everyone and anyone mm. uh, w when you're just one human being. I'm sure it happens to you. I mean, Kamal, I know. No, <laughs> because really. I've invited him and he was unable to <laughs> attend to him. And I still love him. Really? Aaron's, Come on, Kamal, Aaron's, Kamal, Aaron's, Kamal exposed uh, on that. Commitments one. to the uh, yeah. fan. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's, that's very true. That's very true. Uh, Mufti, you were saying there's different people on different spectrums. Nowadays, we have a lot of young brothers trying to connect with their deen, trying to connect with us a lot. We have a lot of young sisters trying to connect with the deen and perhaps observe the hijab, for example, just in one instance. What would your message be to those people, to either to everyone really, to those who are really struggling to connect with their a young faith? brother, a young sister, yeah. to the camera, let them know. MashaAllah, my beloved brother, my beloved sister, number one is our connection with Allah Almighty. We need to make sure every day we improve on it. We must improve on this relationship with Allah Almighty on a daily basis. And beyond that, we need to be very responsible because so many others will benefit from our movement forward. People are watching today, social media, as people, uh, some people remove their hijab and it impacts a lot. When people don the hijab, it equally impacts a lot of people. You may know, you may not know. So whatever you do and whatever you're going to showcase, and, you know, times that showcasing really helps when it's done with the right intention, make sure that it's responsible and understand the repercussions of what you're doing. May Allah make it easy for all of us. I mean, I mean, Mufti, I'm beginning to feel like the annoying passenger that was sitting next to you on the plane. So forgive me. This will be the last question. You can ask um, a few more, actually. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Can then? I touch on something okay, just then, just then, Mufti? Yeah. I think in your message, it was very poignant. And I think, you know what? Um, you know, the scholars of old, for example, Ibn Atala Iskandri would say in many of his teachings, essentially what he's trying to say is that the human experience is so powerful, but throughout everything that you experience and that you see and where you come to the greater realization is the oneness of Allah. So subhanAllah, I think I would pray and, and uh, emphasize those words, connect, mm -hmm. sit down with yourself because those who know themselves know also their Lord. SubhanAllah, so you've just given me permission to ask a few more questions. I'll stick to two. No problem. Um, Make this, it three because of uh, <laughs> Okay, what's it? Okay, Malik, you're gonna, you're gonna grab one of them, the middle one. I'll grab the last one. Mufti, I'm gonna ask a personal question. Um, you're someone who travels the world, goes around. Like, I never see you in Zimbabwe. Like, rarely in Zimbabwe. You're just everywhere in a different country, different city, uh, Dubai, Australia, here, there, everywhere. How do you maintain a happy, successful? family and marriage life living this lifestyle what is your secret it's not a secret uh maybe i don't show when i'm in zimbabwe maybe mm. i i don't showcase it maybe it's not online so that's your secret no the re <laughs> the thing is when you're traveling you're always recording something people someone's recording mm. people are recording like now i'm sitting with you i don't have a team like this back at home so that's the reason why you wouldn't notice when i'm back at home Mm -hmm. But those who carefully follow would actually pick it up. You know, this guy's back at home. Yeah. And I am there quite often. Okay. But I I'm not trying agree. to say like you're not there. No, no, no. I do agree. There, yeah. It's a big sacrifice on the part of your family and on the part of your children. And uh, it's very important to connect with them on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, it's Allah who helps us uh, keep going. Uh, it's very challenging. Mm -hmm. But mashallah, uh, we do have our struggles. I mean, we're human beings. But without the support of family, I would never, and I always say it, I would never be able to have achieved even a fraction of what, of what we have, uh, inshallah, achieved. May Allah make it uh, without easy. the family, without their their understanding, without their preparedness to sacrifice. Yeah, mm. but I do try my best to to be there at you know important occasions. I've cancelled things. I've changed things. I mean. A, a, Childbirth, for example, I've always tried to be there because that's uh, an important occasion. Not only that, but even other things. Uh, nowadays, we just plan a certain season when it's just holiday. Oh, yes. So cut out everything. I don't care, you know, but that's going to be dedicated to them. So they feel important as well, given that. Another thing is nearly every day, if not every day, I'm in touch with them.
and we talk to them and you know they nowadays they're video calls and so yeah. on so alhamdulillah it's a good thing so a meaningful conversation meaningful, meaningful conversation time. and yeah your love language you got you got to know the love languages this mm. guy's big on the love languages <laughs> But yeah, that really helps. Yeah. I wonder what your love language is. That's probably, it probably yeah, is time. I time, think, uh, isn't yeah, it? Kamal? Hopefully, time. Words of affirmation. Mashallah, Word. beautiful jacket. Just Generally, it's very nice. Mashallah. Mm -hmm. I've got a big question for you. Mufti. Perhaps for this school. might be the final one for you. Inshallah. Mufti Menk, if you had the chance to speak with the most noblest of creation, Muhammad, وسلم, how would that conversation go? I think. You know, that's such a big one, such a big one. I'm trying to put myself into it. Uh, I just wait for him to say what he has to to me. Mm. I wouldn't even be able to say much. I mean, as much as there'd be a lot that I would like to say, but I think it would only be correct to, to leave the moment for him to say, to guide, to give. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing question. Mm. Yeah, subhanAllah. The next time I come, I'll probably have a bit more to say. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, I almost yeah. got smashed for the last question I put out. You know, you know, you know, subhanAllah, sometimes Allah Almighty gives you an opportunity uh, in a dream to mm. see the Prophet, peace so be so upon so. him. And, 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 you know, it's, it's, while I wouldn't like to talk too much about things, uh, what happens is the awe overtakes mm. the whole situation and it's something amazing i think if it were and it will happen inshallah in the akhirah i mean who said no mm. but who are we in comparison to there's no comparison we are nothing he is the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam the instructions given through him by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it would only be that you just let him, you know, take over completely. Mm. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Sallallahu alayhi. Allah join us with him, Amen. all of us with him. Amen. A man Amen. will be with he Amen. whom he loves. I love you, Mufti. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, we love each other. Alhamdulillah. We love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I won't ask any more questions because the last time I asked a big question about if Mufti Meng passed away, I almost had all of YouTube <laughs> after me. For believe scaring them. them. <laughs> yeah, they were saying, oh, we believe the Muslim yeah. passed away. Why did you do that? And they were like threatening to do things to me. But it I thought you said passed our way, like you passed to uh, Sydney, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I, I was passed just like, away. yeah, it was, it was like a graphic. It was a fake one. But alhamdulillah. Jazakallah so khairan so much. It's been a pleasure to Thank have you. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Uh, we wish May Allah we take you, you guys from strength to strength. And mm -hmm. really, I pray for all those who are doing good work. Uh, those whom we were able to, or we are able to assist personally, and those whom we're not. If you're doing good work, keep it going. Because uh, you know what? Nobody may cheer you on. But trust me, there are people who appreciate the work you do. Anyone doing good work, no matter what it is. And let's not be, uh, you know, jealous of one another mm. and and uh, do down one another and just look at the negatives and just pick on people because that is damaging the ummah you know the youth uh, i'm going to seize the opportunity to say this because it's a Sweet. very important point go, go, go. i've spoken to a lot of youngsters who feel despondent because they are confused because each scholar they followed later started uh, you know ref not only refuting but belittling the other scholars and when they went to another scholar, he was doing it about others. And when they went to a third one, that one was doing it about all of those. And when they went and so on. So they say, look, we just fed up of this. So we don't realize the negativity created by people who do this. And you know what? From, from one and a half to two billion Muslims on earth, that's my estimate. I mean, it's just a thing. If you have a following of 100,000, a million, it's, it's actually negligible. It's very negligible. You know, mm. don't think that you, you, you own the entire, all these platforms and you're the one who everyone actually looks up to. No, even if I have, as you were saying, nine point something, that's a fraction, man. That's a little dot and a speck. Uh, the, the responsibility is across the board. You have to be responsible and you must, you, we have to learn to look at positives, do your thing and carry on. Ya ladina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dhalla idha tadaytum. Oh, you who believe, you know, be concerned about yourselves, your own, your, yourselves, your development, the goodness that comes from you, beam it, you know. 
those who are astray won't be able to affect you negatively if you yourselves are rightly guided. So keep it that way and help others. And it's not wrong to disagree. Like I said, you could refute someone. And it's, it's, it has to be because sometimes people say nonsense. But that refutation needs to happen respectfully, not in a belittling way. What I find a lot of scholars are lacking today is the, the, the care for the person they refuting enough for creating hope within themselves that perhaps because of the way I disagreed or expressed the, the disagreement, this person will actually come to the right path. That's something lacking. I don't know if I can explain totally it. agree with you. That the way, the way we refute people is like we don't want them to come. It's like they're cancelled. It's like there's no hope for them. I remember someone did something wrong on, 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 in their personal lives and they were like written off by the whole lot. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, so does this person not really have another chance mm. ever? I'm, I'm a mentor. I'm a father. Uh, I'm a grandfather now. And I'm, I'm, I want to tell you that I care for my kids who would make a mistake and I'd love to see that eradicated and then come back on the path. Mm. Why don't you like the same for everyone else? Mm. If, if you see a brother who's been, mashallah, doing good and whatever, and he, he faltered, does it mean all the good that he's done is also lost? Mm. It's not. And if you think so, you're affected by the modern day thinking, not by Islam. Because in Islam, the goodness will remain your error. You will come out of it. You'll seek forgiveness. Perhaps you will change your life and you come back on track. But don't you, don't you think that we, we need to work on this, that on ourselves to say, go easy on people, man. The challenges of the globe are tremendous, mm. tremendous. May Allah forgive us and help yeah, us. So, Jazakallah for having me here this evening. Thank you for that absolutely powerful, pertinent reminder. And that really goes to speak to the current time we live in. So Jazakallah khairan for that. Barakallah. Absolutely uh, honor to have you. Inshallah we can get you again and again. Inshallah. And as long as Allah continues to use us until our last breaths. Jazakallah oh, khairan. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. Can you say oh, like, you like, do that subscribe? Outro? And to the camera stuff? there? Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe and what else? Hit brother? the bell for notifications. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yes. Jazakallah khairan. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.